Hey guys, how's it going? So today, it's been a while since I've talked about Cantonese, but I wanted to create, I know there's not a lot of resources out there, so I wanted to try and create a video of the top five books that I've read in Cantonese. This is gonna be books aimed at native speakers, for native speakers that you can use to learn Cantonese, that you can use to read and improve your speaking and your reading and listening and all that stuff. So before we start, I'm gonna go over some so, so when I'm going, going to go over the five books in a second, they're going to be proper books. So before we do that, if in case you're not quite at the level where you're happy to go over books yet, I'm going to go over some other things that I recommend first, and then we'll jump into the list. If, you, if you're looking at getting started with reading actual Cantonese and you're not sure where to start, then this is a book that I'd recommend called Wedding Bells. And again, the link's in the description to this page here in the description. And basically what this is, is it's... A book published by Greenwood Press split into 20 chapters. Each is supposed to be about, about a short page long. It's a, it's a small book of each one page long. And then basically each of those 20 chapters comes with audio and it tells the story of a Hong Kong girl falling in love with a Japanese man and the story progresses throughout this book. Now this is designed for learners so the language is not too complicated and each one comes with audio to help you as well as um, I think it comes with a Yale romanization. So this, if you're looking at getting into reading Cantonese, I would highly recommend. And the other thing is I would also recommend here is this is by an author called Kusan and there's a series of comic books called Our Dick Gong Lo Lo which is here's the title here in characters. And I'm just gonna click on the link. So basically what it is is it's just a load of comedy sketches for this guy's drawn here with him and his wife and they're going around sometimes they're like travelling to Japan, like cooking each other dinner and stuff like that. The um, the content's not that complicated, but I think it's really, really funny. But I think a thing to note is most of the, with most comic books in Cantonese, what happens is the speech and dialogues is written in Cantonese, but anything that's narration is done in standard written Chinese. So I'd still recommend this book. I don't think it's too complicated for beginners. And um, yeah, I think it's definitely worth your time. But if you want to stick to purely Cantonese and not written Chinese, then maybe this isn't the one for you. And on the comment of comic books, here is a list. There's a website called DM5 when you can get free. Um, there's a website called DM5 when you can get loads of free comic books on here. And I'll leave a link to this Reddit post here where someone compiled a list of all, or not all of, loads of comic books in Cantonese here that you can use to practice with. And again, like before, all of the narration is going to be done in standard written Chinese, but the actual dialogues are done in the actual dialogues themselves are done in Cantonese. So let me give you a quick example. And then you can see here's some dialogue straight away. It's got dim guy. So this isn't standard written Chinese here. And then it's Kanjong. So again, you can see it's not um, not written Chinese. This is Cantonese. So so th those are some. So I just recommended some things if you're not quite ready to jump into books. But if you are, here are the top five that I'd recommend. And what I'm going to do is start and get number five. And then with my least favourite, and then as I go towards the end, it's going to be what I consider getting more and more useful in terms of learning. So the first one is this one here, and this is going to be number five, to survive I'll have to kill myself first. Or in Cantonese, um, 要上春, yao sat seizige. And basically this is a book that's a thriller slash sci-fi book, and it starts off by a bunch of of students who get caught in a storm and get drifted up to this island and in the first chapter of the book I'm not going to give any spoilers past the first chapter in the first chapter of the book they witness a man get killed and then it's from then they end up getting chased and it's kind of how the story unfolds from there and how all the mysteries and things come out from there now I think bits of this um, book can be fairly difficult especially because it's got a lot of descriptive language like especially at the start it's like describing the storm and everything that's going on in the waves and all that and it can be a bit complicated but all in all the chapters are quite short I think what I like about thriller books in general is the chapters are short and there's a lot of chapters so if you're at the point when you can't consume large amounts of text you, know, you can take your time read like one chapter a day maybe read the chapter through twice if you want to and just go through that way and I think if I remember right there's about 40 chapters and if you want to see this I'll leave a link to my post here on Cantonese literature in the description so you can have a look okay and 
Next, this is a book that probably all of you have heard of before is The Little Prince. So when you're talking about books that have actually been translated from other languages into Chinese, there's an awful lot. But if you talk about Cantonese, as far as I'm aware, the only book that's ever actually been translated from another language into Cantonese is The Little Prince. And if you want to use um, pronounced in Cantonese, it's Xiu Wangzi. And you can see the characters there. And here's a link to where you can buy it off yesasia.com. And again, um, this is you can find the link off my resource page here, which is in the description. And yeah, I don't think this book needs any introduction. It's, I want to say, about 30 chapters long. I forgot the exact number. They're all fairly short. There's nothing too complicated in there, although in this translation, there's could be some obscure languages you might not have heard of, like boa constrictor, elephant, uh, stuff like that. And there's also, like, I think there's also a few like set phrases as four character idioms as well. And I think this is actually translated really good. Um, I've read this in Mandarin as well, and I actually preferred the Cantonese translation. I think it's written a lot better. Um, so yeah, I'd definitely recommend checking that out. So moving up the list now on number three, I'm going to recommend a book called All Dick Lay Dick Hong Dick Dak Tixi, which is um, mine, I guess, mine, yours, Red Taxi. And what this is, is it's a s collection of essays or short stories from when there was a student who was working as a taxi driver and he was speaking to different people in Hong Kong gathered loads of different stories from his clients and then compiled it into a book of uh, essays. So this is basically one book with, I think there's 55 essays in total, all written in Cantonese. Um, and I don't think you'll find, like this is an actual short story book of real stories from Hong Kong written in Cantonese. I don't think you'll be able to find that anywhere else. Um, and I read probably more than one friend recommend me reading this book. So it's definitely worth checking out. Um, so yeah, that's for number three on the list. Okay, so next is number two on the list, and you can see the name here. Um, I'll try and pronounce it. Yi Dok Ba Hui Sei Chung Ga. And if you um, actually click on this link, it's a free website when it has all, I think, 80 chapters of the book. But all chapters are kind of almost blog post length. So they're very short. There's a lot of chapters, and they're all very short. So you know, you can just pick how much you want to do a day, and you can say, if you're reading a lot you could read two or three chapters if you want to do a and you could like read shorter and because it's short chapters very fast paced um, I think it's very good for learning and the one thing I probably should warn anyone reading this book is there is a lot of strong language so if you don't like books with a lot of swear words in then don't read this on the other hand if you want to learn some Cantonese slang some Cantonese swear words then I think this is very useful now this is basically starts off. It, I'm, and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about what happens as far as I remember it happened in the first chapter, and I won't give any spoilers past the first chapter. And if you want to find out more, you have to read the book yourself. And it kind of sounds almost a bit like an anime plot at the start. So that there's these um, I think high school kids, if I remember right, sitting in a classroom, and then all of a sudden, you don't know why everyone gets added into this WhatsApp group and the WhatsApp group is the same name as the book Yi Duk Bap Hui Sei Chung Ga and um, so the, everyone in the whole class gets added to this book and then one student in the class says oh this is ridiculous I don't have time for this leaves the group and then all of a sudden their head explodes in the class and you don't know why you don't know what's caused it and it's kind of the mystery of like who created the group how did the person die is it supernatural? Is it real? Is it technology? Is what? And then it's kind of the story of all of the students in this class almost getting roped into this survival game based around this WhatsApp group and the story unraveling behind who did it, what their motives are, and how they're doing it, and all that stuff. And um, this I actually found out about one of my friends. I think it was my friend Israel recommended me this book, and he was saying, "Oh, I started reading the book." Uh, and then I just couldn't put it down. I read the whole thing in one day, and he was just to the point where he was staying up, not sleeping to read the book. And I was like, "Right, that's it. I'm sold. I'll read this." Um, out of all the books I re I've read in Cantonese, this was probably the most entertaining and the most fun. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend checking this out. So then, if I just said that one, "Yi Dak Bao Hui Sei Chung Ga," was the most entertaining, then what would be number one? 
So the one I'm actually going to recommend here is a book called Men Can't Be Poor, Lam Yang Nim Ho Yu Kong. And again, there's links to all these in the description box below. There's actually two books in the series, book one and book two. Um, so the one I'm specifically recommending here is book one, although book two is also uh, worth reading, especially if you enjoyed the first one, it's very similar, so I'd recommend. If you like the first one, then continue reading and go through both. Um, and what I like about this is, so it's it, uh, uh, the story is not overly complicated as well. It's evolving around these two brothers, who one of them is um, unemployed and he joins a stockbroking firm called the London, I think the London Gold Company, to work as a stockbroker. And then it's a roving. The story revolves a lot around just general family issues, real life, making money, um, you know, and all that sort of stuff like that. And the reason why I'd recommend this book as very useful for learning Cantonese is because this book actually got adapted into a film. So I think when I was around about the year and a half mark through learning again, I was kind of I could understand the gist of most movies, but a lot of the detail would get lost in. With, with what was going on but when I sat down and read this book um, you kind of get everything that happens in a lot more detail and then when you go on to read the actual watch the film later you get a much more distilled uh, version of the plot and a lot of details get left out so because I'd already read the story in a lot more detail when I came to watch the film without subtitles that was the first time I had the experience of actually understanding an entire film in Cantonese and that was a really cool thing so I'd recommend this for anyone trying to improve their Cantonese to the next level. It's highly recommend it. And after you watch the first, after you read the first book, the film adaptate, the film is ad adapted from the first book. If you enjoyed the first one, I'd also recommend going on to watch the to read the second book, which is just as good. But I think on average, I preferred the first one. So that is some that is some introduction stuff. If you're getting into reading Chinese, and then there's my top five books that I'd recommend for learning Cantonese but what if you want to try and get into reading something that's not fiction and maybe like some non-fiction and learn more about specific topics so if you're interested again there's a link here in the description box below I made something a while back called expansion packs and basically what this is is it's five essays um, it's it's two packs of five essays one about language learning so like talking about things like Stephen Krasen's theory of comprehensible input connected speech and stuff like that and the other one's talking about history so the history of Hong Kong Opium War history of Macau and so on and you can buy them individually once each $20 and um, and yeah so each and on the page here there's a free sample you can have a look at to see what it's like each one is just a one page essay A4 on a specific topic comes with mp3 and also vocabulary list as well so that's it if you're looking at getting into reading Cantonese more all of these things I've just mentioned today I'd highly recommend and yeah thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one peace